All right, so all the cleanups over 10 years that we've done for Be The Solution to Pollution, 13,672 pounds. Wow. Of that, this is gonna blow your mind. Although you did the cleanup today, so I really shouldn't. Fort Phoenix, 9,616. And as you all know, most of that is light plastic. So you, you, know, you look at the number, you're like, oh, really, 10 years and that's all you got? But a Dunkin' Donuts styrofoam cup does not weigh a lot. All right, so we've got some great speakers today. These kids are our future. The reason I started this group was for the kids because they deserve better. And we've got to change things. And kids, I want you to know that even though you can't vote, you have power and you can change the world. You speak up speak out, and you expect better, okay? Hi. 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 How are you? Good. Doing good. All right, go Miles. Okay, I'm upset because companies have been saying that they're recycling, but it doesn't happen. It's getting burned up or ending up on our beaches. It's more expensive to recycle than it is to make plastic. And when they make that plastic, they're emitting more fossil fuels. Getting more money and filling the world with trash. And the plastic trash doesn't stay here in the United States. We ship it to China, to Indonesia, and to many other countries. So today, we are asking companies to stop making so much plastic. And if you make the product, then you can deal with the waste. is about how plastic pollution is connected to the climate crisis. Greenhouse gases are emitted during every stage of a piece of plastic's life, whether it's during the extraction and transportation of plastic raw materials, manufacturing, waste treatment, or plastic, or plastic entering the environment. Emissions are released into the atmosphere. The overproduction of greenhouse gases dangerously heats up the planet and plays a major factor in the climate crisis. How much emissions are created by plastic? Let's break it down phase by phase, beginning with the gathering of materials to construct plastic. Plastic is primarily composed of three fossil fuels, coal, natural gas, and crude oil. These industries are famously the main emitters of greenhouse gases, and the strategies they use to collect these materials, such as fracking, are terrible for the environment. The act of carrying these fuels to factories is also a source of emissions. In fact, Estimates state that the transport and extraction of natural gas that will become a plastic raw material emits 12.5 million and 13.5 million metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. After the plastic is created, it is typically used once for a single purpose. After it serves that purpose, it will most likely be landfilled, escape into the environment, incinerated, recycled, or or recycled.
though only 10% of plastics are actually recycled and reused. Plastics break down into tinier bits called microplastics. Not only do microplastics gradually let out gases as they divide, they disperse all around the earth and into the oceans. Oceans and their creatures isolate between 30 and 50% of carbon dioxide emissions caused by human activities. Sea organisms like plankton are eating more and more amounts of microplastics, which lessen the productivity of photosynthesis and growth of microalgae. This weakens plankton's capacity to eliminate carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Incineration is another fate for single-use plastics. 12% of plastic is incinerated, or burned for energy. In 2015, the U.S. emitted 5.9 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent from plastics incineration. Projections state that if the trend of production and burning of plastics continues upward, greenhouse gas emissions will rise colossally to 49 million metric tons by 2030 and 91 million by 2050. As society starts to switch to alternative forms of energy, one of the primary sources of emissions will be from the burning of plastic packing waste. With this rate, plastics lifetime will emit 1.3 gigatons of greenhouse gases per year by the year 2030, claiming a large chunk of the carbon budget that aims to keep global temperatures from rising 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. I say plastics lifetime, yet plastic will never fully decompose, and every piece of plastic that's already been made will continue to emit greenhouse gases. Plastic production is only going to increase, and with that, emissions will increase too. To end production, we must ban all plastics, beginning with plastic that has a single purpose. If it is not being reused, it is harming our environment, our climate, our health, and our futures. Thank you. See in front of us and what we can do about it, since obviously the companies don't care. So you might be wondering what all this means and what we can do about it, and I thought the same thing. You see, I actually had a very hard time writing this speech, but this morning I was at a cleanup at, in Fall River, and it wasn't anything special. We were just simply picking up trash from cracks in the sidewalk and from bushes off the street, and I realized that, yeah, it might help if these companies came up with more sustainable products so that we wouldn't have to be dealing with this in the first place, but at the same time, we can still do something while we wait. Because if we don't, the trash we see around us is just going to keep piling up. And though this makes me angry to think that we are the ones that have to do something to clean up this mess, it's better than looking outside and seeing trash everywhere. So I came up with something I like to call STEP. Stop, think, educate, and preserve. Stop. This one's pretty straightforward. Stop before you throw your wrapper into the woods. Stop before you buy yet another plastic water bottle. Think. Think about what you could do instead, instead of buying that plastic water bottle. Think about me and everyone else speaking today and why we're up here. Educate. Educate yourself and then eventually others on why we shouldn't buy plastics and why we need to be careful with what we use. Preserve. This is a little bit more of a goal, a goal to preserve this precious planet we live on. I believe that if we go through this one step every day, you won't have to be ashamed when you look around. Hope can be spread instead of the anger, sadness, and fear that we feel when we see all this trash. So please, consider taking the step with me, and maybe, just maybe, these companies will too.